Last time, our picture was taken. We're gonna find out why. She's still staring at her phone. <clears throat> Without even glancing at me, she turns around and points her phone at some other pedestrian. Maybe she's taking photos of everyone at the scene and not just me. Still, I need to have a word with her. The organization is after me, so we can't risk that photo getting out. Wait, wait, wait! Just ellipses. She doesn't turn around. She's so engrossed in her photography that she doesn't even notice me. Or did she not catch my magnificent native light level English? Oh, yeah, he sounded totally English, guys. Not like I was spoken by a, a native English speaker. At least American English, you know. Hey, you with the phone camera. Wait. Please wait. She said what? Turns back, finally noticing me. And of course, the phone turns with her. Hey, no pictures. Are you with the organization? Voyeur lady? <laughs> her, la her name has changed. Completely ignores my objection. Then she goes back to looking at her phone. Answer my question. Are you with the organization? If she is, then I may have to take su uh, suitable measures. Possible organization spy now. Yeah, you're not. Probably not organization spy. <laughs> Even so, can't let you keep that picture. The organization will stop at nothing to find my whereabouts. They'll kill anyone who gets in their way. I need you to delete that picture immediately. Lady ignoring me. Alright. Is she even listening? Sorry. Wow, she finally speaks. Just a whisper, but it's something. If I upset you. They do apologize out of nowhere. <laughs> she lowers her head slightly in a bow. Or at least they think it's a bow. She's been looking down at the, uh, down all this time, so I can't really tell. Before you apologize, I need you to, del to delete that photo. I was shooting the scenery. Her fingers dance across her phone's keys with impressive speed. Exactly the opposite of her annoyingly slow speech pattern. The scenery. You're a tourist. Or was she one of the people who came to see the satellite? In that case, why did she take a picture of me? She shakes her head without looking at me. It's proof of where I was today. They ignore me, apparently sightseeing in Akihabara. I like how her name just keeps changing every time she says something or her dialogue box comes up. You're a strange lady. Kiryu Moika. Strange lady apparently sightseeing in Akihabara now. Yeah. Hmm? My name. Oh, and a name is associated with the face. Yeah, she's introducing herself. That's nice, but I just want her to delete that photo. I have a question for you. May I? First, the photo. There's an urban legend in Akihabara. Have you heard of it? An urban legend? What is she talking about? Don't tell me there is a brilliant but insane mad scientist said to be lurking in Akihabara? And now that brilliant but insane mad scientist is the target of every assassin in the underworld? Gah! I remain in this town for far too long! I need to make plans. Akihabara, you weren't such a bad town. I'm glad to- Phantom Retro PC Retro PC? She replies with a nod, something like a nod. They say there's one in Akihabara. Oh! Nothing about a mad scientist. Relieved, but also disappointed. At any rate, this is the first I've heard about a phantom retro PC. Retro PC, you mean like a 98? Uh, well, let's find out what that means. Like a Windows 98? Other. A Japanese PC series sold from the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s. Sold so well that at one point... Oh, okay. It's called the National Computer. Okay, I know what they're talking about. Never mind. I was wrong. Don't mind me. <clears throat> it's the first model that comes to mind. But are 98s really that hard to find? Shakes her head slightly, or something like a shake. No. This. Turns her phone towards me. 
The screen shows an oddly shaped computer. It's hard to tell since the picture is monochrome, but it looks like some kind of PC. It looks kind of familiar. An IBM 5100. An IBM 5100. That's the computer John Tyler tried to get. Finger switch, I think. You seen one? No, I've only heard the name. <clears throat> Coincidence? No. This could be the choice of Steinsgate. Know anyone who might know? Dora probably knows more about it. He's my favorite right ahead. Favorite right arm, super hacker capable of breaking into even M MI6's mainframe. You guys don't know who MI6 is, uh, come on. In the United Kingdom, the government organizes responsible for, for the government organization responsible for foreign intelligence operations. MI6 stands for Military Intelligence Section 6. However, its formal name is the Secret Intelligence Service, SIS. The more you know. Anyway. The MI6 part is a slight exaggeration. If that ever did happen, men in black would break down our door and take us away. <laughs> like, bye! Super hack apart is true. Depth of his computer knowledge is uncanny. See you, Daru. I'm supposed to meet him at May Queen, uh, waking, uh, May Queen Nan, uh, Nyan Nyan. I don't have time to stand and chat with some crazy lady I don't know. Well, I'm off, lady. Media scrum in moderation. You guys know what media scrum means? Well, you're allowed to find out if you don't. During news stories with high public interest, reporters sometimes latch onto persons of interest, bombarding them with questions, prying into their lives, they even camping outside their houses. These activities are a serious invasion of privacy and can infl inflict mental and emotional stress on the subject. See? Now you know. I try to make a smooth exit, one liner and everything, but she grabs my sleeve before I can disappear into the crowd. What are you doing? Your email, please. What are you after? The super hacker. I guess she wants to hear Daru's story. It's my fault for mentioning him. Well, I'm meeting up with Daru, so why don't I just take her along? No, wait a second. This could be a devious trap. Maybe she's really a spy sent to kidnap Daru. I'm defenseless without him. My only other ally is Mayuri, whose skills amount to costume design. I refuse! Never give up Daru! I slip past her and start walking faster. Glance back. She's following me. <laughs> I pick up the pace. But she's still chasing me. Stop following me! I'm perturbed she shows me her phone again. On the screen is a picture of me that she took. Good. Still haven't deleted it. Tell me, and I'll delete it. You dare blackmail me? Who do you work for? Attempt to glare her into submission. But her eyes are al already lowered. My glare is ineffective. I. She hesitates for a second. Work part time at Arc Rewrite. What's that? An editorial company here in Akihabara. One of those companies that write articles for magazines. This is gloomy lady really fit for that kind of work. <laughs> Wait, you plan on publishing my picture without permission, don't you? Mad scientist Akihabara Akiba unveiled. You can see the headlines now. That's all the organization will need to turn Akiba into a seal blood. No. I must avoid that gruesome outcome at all costs. I have no choice. Very well. I accept your terms. At any rate, as long as she has that photo, I have no way of knowing how it might be used. Pull up my email address and show it to her. Looking back and forth through my phone to hers, she enters my info with terrifying speed. Of course, this woman is an esper. You guys know what espers are? Oh, gotta look up. Chunibyo. Uh, it's delusion, guys. General term for humans who possess supernatural powers. Common powers include telepathy, telekinesis, and precognition, though more exotic powers exist. 
There's a rumor that some Espers even possess the ability to reshape reality with pure force of will. Derives from the term ESP, which stands for Extrasensory Perception. We Get all the learning you need here. I double her power. Shining Finger. Magical thumb types cursed emails at 255 characters per minute. Whoever receives one dies. Uh, I like how raw... I like how uh, Okabe basically just gives all these random descriptions and name stuff and stuff. It's cool. She's untyping my address. Took all of five seconds. Name? Hoin Choma! Mad scientist. How is it spelled? First, Ho for Phoenix. Then Yin! And finally, Choma! Which means a horrible truth that must never be revealed. Hole for Phoenix, then in, and finally Kyoma, which means horrible truth that must never be revealed. Read my perfect explanation. <laughs> this is the origin of my true name. This is the in part of Hoin would take too long, so I left it out. She enters my name with her head tilted to the side. Like this. <clears throat> the hell is this? Are you mocking me? Ho owing yo ma. <laughs> ho owing yo ma? Really? Uh, she lowers the head a little more and apologetic bow, I guess. Just hand me your phone, I'll enter it. Shakes her head, clutching her phone with both hands as if to protect it from me. Like a spoiled child who can't let go of a toy, she shields it from me with all her might. Does she think I'm going to do? Her reaction is a little depressing. Anyway, she's obviously not going to hand her phone over, so I asked for her address instead. I'll send her a blank, e a blank mail. She told me her name a few minutes ago, but I forgot it already, so I enter her a shining finger. What am I doing standing here in the middle of the street? Let's hurry up and send her a blank email. Oh. It's, uh... How did I do it? No. There you go. Open inbox. Outbox. Oh, no. Uh, open address book. Shining fear outgoing. And sent. I forgot I have to. I forgot. Uh, there's actual things I have to do with my phone. She's staring at her phone. I don't think I've ever met someone ma who made less eye contact. For a few seconds, her phone. Receives the email. Uh, receives the email. Okabe Rintaro. What? How do you know that name? From the blank email. Damn, my email is still linked to my real name. Let's change that at once. That's just my al alias. I'll send another one with my true. No. This is fine. <laughs> Nonsense! I am not Okabe Rintaro, but Hoin! Kill She's really not buying it. <laughs> <coughs> Do you delete the picture? She nods slightly, I think. It's really hard to tell. Her body language is as subdued as her voice. If you deleted it, then prove it. Suddenly shows me her screen. The only picture remaining is the one of that computer. That's a relief. I'll email you later. So ask, okay? About what? The urban legend. Oh, that. I almost forgot. <laughs> With that, Shining Finger wanders off. Throughout the encounter, she kept the same cool expression. Actually, I don't think we ever once made eye contact. Eh, eh, you know. <clears throat> Man, you can't escape cat girls anywhere, guys. It's a fact of life. Welcome back, Nyaster! Nyaster! I open the door to the Maid Queen Yan Yan Maid Cafe, and two familiar carrier girls greet me with smiles. By the way, if you can't tell, that's uh, Mayuri on the right, guys. Just saying. <coughs> it's Ocarine! One of them is Mayuri. But here she's called Mayushi Nyan Yan. Since she works here, I stop by about twice a month. 
Guess that would make me a regular customer. Actually, I've never been to any other maid cafe. Welcome back, Okanine. After bowing again, Maria gasped as if she thought of something. Hey, Okanine, why did she just notice something? Welcome back, and Okanine go well together. Oh, because, like, Okari. Asai? Okari. Something like that. Anyway, whatever. <clears throat> Kelma, it's great that you came, Nya. The other maid who came to greet me, Ferris Nyan Nyan, professional name of course, hits me with her trademark combo attack of cute cat-like gestures. She's Maid Queen Nyan Nyan's most popular maid. Uh, no, she. Ah, oh, come on. Sup? Oh, I asked my Yuri chan about what it is you're fighting against. She just laughed and didn't answer. What should I do? I want to help you my son. Reply. You don't need to know, not yet. Eventually, if Steins Gate so chooses, you'll learn the truth whether you're really ready or not. Send. So Shin <coughs> It's important. I'm gonna send all these emails, guys. Anyway. I know it might be rude when I'm in the middle of uh Dialoguing, but you know how it is. Anyway. Even though she and Mayuri are about the same age, she looks and acts a bit younger. Darunyan's here too. He's been waiting, ya. Yeah? Dar frequents his cafe because he's got a crush on Ferris. He often reads her public blog while muttering, Ferris, you're so cute to himself. Got it real bad. <laughs> Keep telling him to choose either 2D or 3D, but he doesn't listen. I also have trouble dealing with this cat girl. She always finds a way to best me. Are you holding another secret meeting to overthrow the evil organization, ya? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Something like that. Ferris wants to try and tune, ya! Yeah. No chance! The organization is threatened by cat ear maids. Not true, Nya. Ferris has the perfect secret technique to help take them down. What? You finally mastered that secret technique. By the way, uh, this is the type of conversations uh, you're going to be seeing between these two, so get used to it. Yes, Nya. After completing my pilgrimage to the Guiana Highlands and overcoming my mentor's death, I finally mastered it. What mentor? Ferris knows my true name, Hoi Koma. Those are totally all about the organization. Now she's more into it than I am. She's always the one to bring up the subject whenever we meet. By the way, this is the first time I've heard of this secret technique, or whatever it is. So Ferris wants to participate in the spirit conference like you promised, yeah. Ugh, she's not letting it go. Take 30 minutes so I play along with her. Not suggesting, suggesting we venture into the sanctuary. The answer is no. Although you may understand the hidden secrets, you're still too inexperienced. But, but you promised, Nya. Are you going to betray me? My brother is waiting for me there. Since when do you have a brother? And what the hell is this spirit conference anyway? Ferris looks at me with actual tears in her eyes. Falter, even though I know it's just one of her cutesy acts. Whenever I talk with her, I run out of comebacks, which is really unusual for me. <laughs> then she takes the initiative, leaving me with nothing to do but listen to her fantasies. I mean, come on, you can only take it so far. There's a very clear difference between her stories and mine. As anyone can see, I speak nothing but the truth, while Ferris has only delusions and a made-up backstory. Fuck her? Um, that's a very weird thing to say, Corey asks. Either in the, like, ah, oh, screw that bitch, or in the, oh, you should screw that bitch. Either way. I always have to play along. That's why I feel like I could never best her. Um, I don't quite get it, but can Mayushi go to the Sanctuary too? Great, now look who's joined in. So it's going to get worse from here. I have to end this conversation now. You can't come. This discussion is over. Eh? No fair, Kilma. That's right. Leave my Ishii and Ferris time behind is mean. Who is Ferris? 
Ferris Chan is Ferris Chan, right? Right! Maria and Ferris look at each other and smile. What? She thought about this, Ferris? Is that her real name? Have I been mistaken all this time? That's a disturbing thought. <laughs> what? Well, maybe she has a hard time saying Ferris. So I call her Ferris Chan instead. Oh, fair. Oh, so that's it. It's like we're in a girl's school. That's not too tabby. Hell yeah, cat puns. Go drink. <laughs> okay then, moving on. Show me to the table already. How long do you want me to stand here waiting? <laughs> Sorry, Nya. Table for two. This way, Nyan. Maishi. I'll leave it to you, Nyan Nyan. Leave it to me, Nyan Nyan. Yeah, I didn't notice the cat here maids here at May Queen Nyan Nyan are required to add cat sounds. Nyas and Yans to their words with some frequency. Hey. Oh, welcome, King. Making dinner? Sounds good. I haven't eaten. Make mine, too. Maria takes my hand and leads me inside. Apparently, Mayushi Nyan Nyan is the only one who leads customers by the hand like this. It probably comes naturally to her. She doesn't even realize the effect that has on her customers. That's why she's second to Ferris in popularity at this maid cafe. She guides me to Daro's table. Tables are about 60% full. Among Akiko's maid cafes, May Queen Nyan Nyan's popularity is solid, but not booming. Considering what Ferris and the others are wearing, it's more like a cosplay cafe than a maid cafe. Furthermore, the cat ears and Nyan 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 dialect makes it less accessible to low-level otaku and first-timers. On the other hand, those same cat ears are a topic of heated debate among die-hard maid cafe fans. Maids don't have cat ears! Cat ears plus maid equals twice the mole! Really? Man, it's just like every discussion on those message boards ever. These two viewpoints clash. Places one of the older maid cafes in Akihabara, but it doesn't get much media exposure. Maybe that's what makes it more comfortable than most. At least that's what Daru says. He talks about this stuff so much that it's been burned into my syn uh, synapses. I can see Daru doing that. Daru-kun, Okarin is here, Nyan. You're way late. Seriously, man. Daru sits in front of me, but doesn't look, uh, look my way. He looks upset for some reason. So what were you talking about with Ferris? I want details. You really want to know? I don't think you understand it. Hell, even I didn't get most of it. <laughs> oh, the usual. Your conversations are too much for regular otaku. Guys exude an aura or something, you know? It's like you had, you two have your own reality marvel. You know, I can't forgive you! Hell yeah! Reality Marvel reference. Okay, uh, this is actually from uh, Type Moon, so I knew what this was right away too. Mm. A type of magecraft in which the user overwrites the world with a pocket dimension based on his or her emotional experience. Often used in ordinary conversations, speak of couples flirting in public, immersed in their own world, not caring about the pain they are inflicting on others. There you go. I think Ferris Chan likes Ocarina, yeah? Of all the maids and masters here, yeah? The only one who keeps up with Ferris Chan is you, Ocarina. Not even close to keeping up with her. I'm so jealous! You lucky bastard! Anyway. Huh! I have no interest in women who dresses themselves in lies. Like you're one to talk. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh! Silence, you unfaithful bastard! All your 2D wives are crying! It's <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> good, that's good. Whoa! Stroke a nerve, man! <laughs> Darth theatrically grabs his chest and falls on the table. Oh! Anyway. I sip from one of the glasses of water that Mary brought to our table. Master, may I take your order, Nya? Omelette rice and hot coffee. Black. Coming right up, Nyan Nyan. After taking my order, Mayuri finds her way towards the counter as if swimming between the rows of tables. Hope she doesn't trip. So, what did you need? Dora asks without getting up from the table. 
That's right. My confrontations with Shining Finger and Cat Girl. I almost forgot my original ob objective. I was going to head to the lab in about an hour. I have an urgent matter to discuss. Top secret. I lean on the table and scan the area without moving my head. Remember John Titer. John Titer? Who's that? A self-proclaimed time traveler who appeared on the internet about 10 years ago. Thought we talked about him before. Is this a new addition to your made-up backstory? It's nothing like that. Everything I say is the truth! What a pain. Well, I guess I can play along. So what's the source of this tighter guy being from the future? Wait, you seriously never heard of him about him before? Seriously, bro, I haven't. Sure you didn't just forget. I can't say for sure. There are even books about him. I might remember if you showed me one. Really don't remember. Memories fade, we're not computers, man. This is wrong. I remember talking to Dara about John Titer back in high school. It was only idle talk, so it's possible that Dara forgot about it. Dara's quite the internet addict, but the internet lets you choose what information you want to see. There's no guarantee Dara looked up info on John Titer. If he had, I doubt he would have forgotten so completely. So my memories are mistaken, or everyone else's. So what about the IBM 5100? Whoa, you know about that? Cool. So you know about it. It's the model IBM released back in 1975. By the way, guys, IBM, not to be confused with IBM, actual company that exists in our world. Nope. Right, that's what John Titer said on that channel. Travel to 1975 first, obtained an IBM 5100, then leaped to 1998. What kind of computer is it? The stupidly expensive kind. Back when it first came out, computers were so expensive that average people couldn't get their hands on them. It was full of prov proprietary IBM technology. It was a pretty powerful computer for its time. Then six years later, in 1981, IBM launched a popular IBM PC series. Now that's more famous. Anyway, it's not like I'm an expert. This is just stuff I read on a wiki. Hell yeah, if you guys don't know what wikis are, like, I don't know what you're doing. Internet. An online system for the creation and compilation of hypertext documents on a web server. Usually has information, hopefully it's right. Have you heard the urban legend that there's one in Akiba? You bet I have. Just last month there was big talk about it on the net. Some at channelers heard the rumors and went searching for it. Friend on Free Para, Sister Centipede, was the main person behind that. Free Para? Uh, internet fictional, a popular SNS social oh social network service website. Signed to facilitate easy communication between uh, users. I think that's based off of something real too, probably. It's not they probably took the actual name for it. Not sure. It sounds familiar, but at the same time doesn't. Maybe I'm in the wrong world line, who knows? Anyway. Oh wait, we don't know about that yet. Crap! I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, people. <laughs> anyway, you the legendary Needhart, uh, Needhart the Blitch, no? Wow, damn, that guy has a name. Needhart the uh, Blitch, no? Joined the fray, but they still couldn't find it. So it was just a hoax. Who knows? There are tons of underground shops in Akiba. It wouldn't be strange if an IBM 5100 suddenly turned up in some hole in the wall. Hmm, I see. His phone suddenly starts vibrating. God damn it! Ugh, got mail. Oh, it's Shining Finger. Okabe san, I mailed you as soon as I could. My name is Kiri Momoka. I am a 20 year old free, 20 year old freelance editor. I believe I mentioned I work part time at Arc Rewrite. So sorry for taking your picture. Uh, sorry for taking your picture. I wasn't on purpose. I need some shots of Akira. Akira for work, and you just happen to be in one. Actually, to tell you the truth, I was hoping to sneak some shots to satellite LMAO. LMAO. By the way, the portrait I took was just a test, not the final shot. That's why I was using my phone. If you hadn't be begged me to delete it, I wouldn't have posted it, so don't worry. I, mean, I should get to the point. Really sorry for asking like this. Oh, good, but it would be. Oh, you know what? Last week. 
I suggested that patch that like helps with the word wrapping and stuff and the translation. I really should uh, find that and apply it because this is this is clearly a good reason why I might need it. It's hard to read these texts a little bit, you know. And so I would really be super great if you could ask for your friends, super hacker about the IBM 5100. I don't really know anything about computers, especially little computers. All I have to go on is that picture I showed you. I'll attach the image. You have to be positive. Be absolutely positively sure to reply. Okay. You waiting? If you could, I'd be super happy if you gave your super hacker friend and you know that one. Okay. There's the attachments. All right. Really shitty image. Oh come on. What's this email? Bye. Bye. Boca. Okay, just uh, disregarding the weird timing. This is really the gloomy, unsociable woman I met in front of Radicon. It's like a completely different person in this email. Does she have split personalities or something? <clears> hmm. <throat> well, got some info on, about the IBM 5100, so I guess I should give her a reply. If I send an immediate reply to a woman I just met, would well, I come off as clean and desperate? I, Hoin Joma, will not be taken lightly. This is my chance to make her understand which one of us is a superior human being. And above all, I have yet to ascertain she can be trusted. She might start harassing me if I reply the wrong way. Besides, she hasn't proven that she's not working for the organization. Nonetheless, it can hurt to tell her what I learned about learned from Daru. Scourge her, of course. Mwahahaha! So, pulling out the phone, I guess? Alright. Uh, no? Okay. No? I can't reply. Reply, okay. Tell Daru to wait a bit as I start typing out a response. It's not like I trust her, but I figure I should tell her what I learned from Daru. And then she'll be completely discouraged. Mwahaha! You heard about the IBM 5100 aspect, it is extremely rare. Last month, some PC otaku searched all over Akiba without finding it. Finding one. Turns out the rumors we heard were false. LSI Kongaru. Sending an email. Okay, sent. What? Response already! Hardly any time lag. It's always shining finger, your digits defy the laws of physics. Start reading the email. Oh, damn it! Is that true? It can't be. I'll, be. I'll mail you again. By the way, you mentioned a John something or other. Did you? Did you does that John person have an IBM 5100? Please reply soon. Just say I thought. That woman has a predisposition for harassment. Never should have gotten involved with her. So I replied this one. I fulfilled my minimal obligation. <laughs> Nothing to feel guilty about. Sorry for the wait, Daru. So there's one thing I need to know. Scan the area of my eyes once more, then I lean in close. The IBM 5100 has the power to destroy the world, right? What? It doesn't have the power to do anything, let alone destroy the damn world. <coughs> What's this, nya? The world's gonna be destroyed, nya? Ferris brings my omelette rice. Stir her cat-like gestures while keeping her tray balanced on one hand. The true feline agility. Despite our nyan 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 nonsense, Ferris is a consummate professional. Master, thanks for waiting, nyan nyan. Omelette rice, nyan. The cat girl puts the omelette rice on the table and then takes a bottle of ketchup from her apron pocket. She uses it to write, The world is doomed in red letters upon the omelette's blank yellow canvas. No, The world is doomed per my... Omelette rice, I guess. <laughs> Please enjoy your meal before the world ends. Whoa. The world is doomed for the win. Ferris handwriting is so cute it puts my omelette in danger too. Here's a cuteness that shattered Daru's sanity. I give him a look that says, calm down. But to no avail. Smooth out the ketchup with the bottom of my spoon, erasing the ketchup words. Oh, uh, what a waste. Going to eat it either way. <clears throat> Darunyan, Darunyan, have you considered participating in the Ferris Cup, Nya? Yeah, of course I'm participating. 
Ferris cup, what's that? Take about the little omelet rice. Om nom nom nom. That zoom in though? Yeah. Next Sunday, we're hosting a ride net tournament at the cafe, yeah? Ferris starts dancing in place. Nya 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 nya, dance 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 dance, nya 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 nya. What? I prefer she not jump around like that when people are eating nearby. <coughs> Ferris is the event organizer. It's all my idea, Nyan. You can participate too if you want, Kyoma. Entrance fee is 1,000 yen. Includes a drink. Whoever beats Ferris gets to enjoy some of Ferris's home cooking, yeah. It'll never happen. All green socks at Rhino. Yeah? But it's so fun. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm... I'm fine. Fine. So I'm shoveling the omelet rice into my mouth. I deliver a melancholy sigh. Ugh. Ryan and Access Battlers, huh? Whenever you hear that name, I remember the former champion. Has already, already been two years. No, it's nothing. Forget what I said. Nya, nya. That sounded so serious, Nya. Who was the former champion, Nya? He probably doesn't exist. I mean, Ryanet didn't even have official tournaments until about a year ago. Kelma, you still can't forget him, can you, Nya? What? I remember that you and the champion, my brother, were such good friends, Kelma. You were so close it made me jealous, Nya. Damn it, she took my story and ran with it again. Never even said anything about him being her brother. Hell, I don't know if Ferris even has siblings. I shouldn't have talked about stuff like this in front of Ferris. But, it's time to let go of the past. Seize the day with your own paws. A shout resounds throughout the store. Her finger snaps at me. Something like that. Even though it's painful, no, because it's painful, I succeeded my brother's dying wish and perfected my skills as a right netter, Nya. Do you remember, Nya? He always used to say, Someday, let's bring peace to the world with Rynet. And I used to say, Somebody once told me the world was going to roll me. Wait, what? Ferris, bring me my coffee. Nya, Nya. Present my empty plate to Ferris. Always eat quickly. It's a habit I picked up naturally during my years on the run from the organization. Screw the slow food trend. <laughs> uh, food that takes time to cook and eat as opposed to fast food or instant food. Well, you know, whatever. Sure thing, master. Just one moment, yeah. First sixth edition heads back to the counter. Whew! I left things going as they were, I would have had to play along for another 10 minutes in her fantasy world. Ferris is the one, is one of the most skilled Ryanetters I know. Tara explains with a wry smile. She's gone undefeated over 400 unofficial matches. She ricks in Gra Gracie. Tara ignores my perfect retort. It's so disappointing that Ferris doesn't go to official tournaments. She'd win if she did, no doubt. Why doesn't she? I'm sure it's for the customers. She probably doesn't want to inconvenience the store. Truly a model maid. Also, she's my Yushi's age, so she probably has school too. She doesn't want to inconvenience the store, yet she's holding the Ferris Cup here. That doesn't matter at all. The point is, Ferris is cute, and cuteness is justice. Cute cat ear maids are sweet. If you know what I mean, and that's all that matters, right? So in the end, do you bat for the 2D team? Or the 3D team. I dare say I'm by. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're an inspiration, Dar. <laughs> I guess. I guess it is. I know. I'm just too awesome. Uh, the sounds like Yogi Bear. Yeah, that's the point. Light voice for him, okay? Dar usually doesn't show enthusiasm for anything. Exceptions are more and Ferris. I wish you were this passionate about our experiments. Yo, I received mail? I received mail. The final battle is close at hand, yeah. More purse theft than I thought, yeah. So now you understand what's at stake. The Red Southern Cross will soon hatch, yeah. 
Time has come for Ferris to journey to the sex we're prepared for. I can say no more, Nya. What are you talking about? Will you quit? No. no. I see. So the holders, the holders of original sin, those who like me, were born of Prototype 13, have begun to assemble. In Akiba, guided by this, uh, by the star that we alone can see. The time is right. All right. Yeah, that's a that's a response we're gonna give to Ferris. All right. Seems good. She'll like that one, right? <laughs> I had to pull Dara away from Ferris so we could return to the lab. We arrived to find a hotter than a sauna in hell. Quickly open the windows, letting a small breeze blow in. It won't be enough. Flip our fan to full power and place it on the table in front of me. I really wish we had an air conditioner. Turn on the computer. Is there a PC from... For communal use among lab members. So use an old CRT monitor so it looks ancient. Guys, if you don't know, know what CRT is, it's another name for the cathode ray tube. This name is used more commonly in Germany and Japan. It comes from the name of the inventor of the cathode ray tube, Carl Ferdinand Brown. Don't let it don't let his looks deceive you. Our computer whiz Daru Crowned up some parts and made some mods to it. In any case, I don't spend much time on it. I mostly use it to update the future Gadget Laboratories homepage, check my emails, visit news sites, and browse at channel. What if the new Titer is still posting? Oh, he is. I see that everyone would like to know more about my time machine. I'm happy to explain. Just so you know, it's impossible to reproduce with current technology. Certain critical components won't exist until certain events them in 2034. Time travel works by alter altering gravity. But you see, you think of it as using twin paradox, but that alone isn't enough to reverse time. Anonymous, still here, Faker. You're annoying. Go away. So your person, your power is gravity control. Not bad. But still not enough for top tier power levels. The twin paradox is that like the Hiroshima effect? That's just slowing time down, not reversing it. Who gives a shit about the time machine? Give me stock prices. Hey, look, Okama's about to say something. It uses Tipler cylinders and care black holes, doesn't it? Just like you said 10 years ago, and your time machine is a 1970s Chevy. Uh, really? Oh, we can't check, so we have to keep going with this. Do you call it that thing they force you to play melee on? Fair. I know all of it. Oh gosh, what the fuck are we discussing, shooting scum? Twin Paradox and Rishima Effect are different things, duh. Time travel, lol. John Titer, lol. Yo, yo, can we talk about the fact that this very much sounds like your standard internet lingo when you go on like forums and shit? A Chevy's an American car, right? I'd rather go German with a BMW, lol. Goddamn people. Curry, go on and come on, come on. A Tipler cylinder is referring to the Tipler machine, lol what? Tipler cylinder would have to be 10 kilometers in diameter, 1,000 kilometers long, have mass equal to the sun and revolve 2,500 times per second. Go time machine, lol. We fit that onto a Chevy, even if you could. A typical machine can't travel further back in time than the moment of its creation. Not for your delusions, at channels, not your blog. I want to hear from John Titer. <clears throat> Meanwhile, John Titer says, This is a surprise. Does this mean people of this age already know about my time machine? Did you really encounter me 10 years ago? So then, that must have been on another world line. I at least have not gone to the year 2000. In any case, the important point is that a rotating black hole has the same effect as a Tipler cylinder. Uh, uh, cyclinder? Cyclinder, okay. You can learn more about current black holes by studying the Penrose diagram or Tipler's calculations. The time machine works by generating a pair of current black holes. And Japanese, please! Tiger came for 10 years ago? Source? The fuck are current black holes? Playing using boobies or erotic ones. God damn it, there's always somebody who's like, I want porn, that's it. Fuck you, Anonymous. Uh, where are you? Anonymous ID K483Z8 slash C0. You're the reason why there's porn on the internet all the time, you fucker. And probably everyone else, actually, so. You too, listening to this. Uh, I'll pay 1,000 yen to ride your time machine, not a yen more. Sources, whole sans solutions, law, real deal. Kuri Gohan Kamaha, he didn't deny it, lol, all aboard Hoenn's crazy train, prepare for a train wreck. Current black hole time travel is theoretically possible, but 
One, how do you get black holes to spin? Don't tell me you wait until you find one spinning naturally. That's ridiculous. Two, how do you pass through the singularities? There's no way a Chevy can withstand the pressure. Anonymous. Why the short explanation, John? You stupid? Wanna die? Always have one person that I had to ask. So, wait, what? Still no sock prices! Crash. That is a very cute flipping table, I guess? Sound? I don't know. This isn't a delusion. I know for a fact that Tyler posted 10 years ago. Even a book about it. Search the used bookstores if you don't believe me. Chevy has a gravity distortion unit. That's what he said 10 years ago. Yes, it does have a gravity distortion unit. Time machine is not perfect. It was built by a third party reverse engineer service design. Gravity distortion unit is a little unstable. First, the unit produces a micro singularity that injects electrons to induce rapid rotation. It generates a local gravity sine wave. As the time machine passes through the singularity, gravity distortion unit regulates the pressure to ensure safe passage. Not a specialist, so I can't explain the mechanics any further. Let me just say that curved black holes can be manufactured. So everyone's aware of CERN's current experiments with black hole creation. TLDR SCFU. Wait, what? Unstable sounds dangerous. Not as oh fuck. Tyrus black holes are gonna swallow the earth! Not just a mass murderer! Spread to wipe out the entire race! Find the spares before it's too late! Could go on come on. It's not that you won't explain, it's that you can't lol. I just said the destination, the Earth is constantly moving, or didn't you know that? By the way, I proposed the tighter equals holding theory, lol. Set the destination with the VGL system, that's variable gravity lock. It functions by reading the local gravity of the destination and locking the Tipler sine wave onto that location. Locking onto Earth's gravity ensures that I don't end up floating in space. Use the four cesium clocks to make, that, make the calculations, so the margin of error, error is negligible. Hoi needs to shut up, lol, I never heard of any tire for 10 years ago, lol. The universe is deep in tighter shit. Same information was in, tighter, in the tighter book. All you've done is post 10 year old copy pasta. Anyone do that? How do I know you're the real tighter? And then there's this one person who's like, Is it bad that you understand Kingdom Hearts better than this? No, it just means that you like Kingdom Hearts, and unlike physics, which essentially is an entire study outside of this game. You could just play the Kingdom Hearts game to understand Kingdom Hearts, which helps. So, that actually makes some sense that it makes more sense that you would understand Kingdom Hearts more. Because you can play all the Kingdom Hearts games and understand that, but you can't play just Steins Gate and understand, like, uh, theory of relativity physics and stuff, and the things they're talking about here. You know? That's all. It's fine. John Tansel, Moe, my waifu, I recognize different opinions. I'm feeling more and more disappointed. Still not, nothing concrete. Nice try, I guess, but I won't be fooled. Whoa, I shouldn't waste all day on that channel. Whoa, all that internet. Man, we have to read this stuff. For science. Singularity. In astrophysics, a point of infinite gravity, singularities are predicted to exist at the center of black holes. However, since it's impossible to observe the interior of a singularity, the existence of such cannot be proven. In a black hole, singularity is formed by the gravitational collapse of a dying star. For example, imagine a star uh, millions of kilometers in diameter. Now imagine that entire star's mass compressed into a space smaller than the period at the end of the sentence. That is a singularity. And in Japanese, please, Nihongo de OK. A, a teasing phrase used on online message boards to tell an incomprehensible poster to please post comprehensibly. Chevy. Fictional. An American automobile brand. Not to be confused with the real one. Not not the real one, guys. We have more important things to deal with. Namely, the phone wave name subject to change. We haven't experimented with it since yesterday. It's high time to figure out what's going on with that thing. Earlier I asked to connect the phone wave name subject to change to the computer. Finished setting it up yesterday, and now he's about to do the quick wire work in the development room. Hey, Daru, what's with the X68000? X68000. A 16 bit PC sold in Japan in the late 1980s. Its peculiar twin tower case was dubbed Manhattan shaped. It looks like Manhattan. I wish it still did. I mean, it's a 20 year old machine with specs lower than my cell phone. It's cool, duh. <laughs> well, you know, if you're gonna do something, you know, do it because it's cool, sure. So it's like the reason why some protagonists are odd eyed even though they're Japanese. Uh, odd eyed. Chunibyo. 
Heterochromia iridis, a condition where the eyes are different colors. Trade often found in anime and manga characters. There usually isn't a reason for the character to be odd eyed. It's mostly just for moya or coolness factor. Wait, what if they uh, had a reason? It's not dark at all. As a resident of New York, I wish we still had Twin Towers. Just saying. Not kidding you, bro. It's cool. If it's cool, then it's cool. Anyway, there wasn't much of an option. This was the only PC we weren't using. What about your new one? No way. We don't know what could happen when it's connected to your crazy machine. Kill the performance. Selfish bastard. Besides, we made the formula and name subjects to change together. It's our crazy machine. Anyway, did you do any research on the jellification? Yeah, at the university this morning. Why would a banana jellify? What kind of science are we dealing with here? I examined the sample under a microscope and found it was shredded at the molecular level. Shredded? It's not a mere phase transition. The banana became something entirely different. Ooh. A phase transition is what occurs when a substance changes from one state of matter to another. Examples include liquid solid freezing, liquid gas evaporation, ferromagnetic paramagnetic, and the vacuum phase transition. There you go. Science. More science. This music reminds you of the final area of Metal Gear Solid 2. Well, this is just the beginning. Ish, still kind of, you know. We're only like four-ish hours in, so... Yeah, there's still a lot more game. A lot more game. Could it have rotted? Nah, there's no way two minutes in the microwave could do that. Then I remembered about fractal structures. Fractal? Fractal structures, whoops. In geometry, a structure that demonstrates self-similarity. The smallest portion of a fractal structure will appear similar to the whole. Common examples of fractal structures are snowflakes and coastlines. And broccoli! Like everything in broccoli looks like a smaller break. If you, if you break a giant stalk of broccoli, it looks like a smaller stalk of broccoli. Just saying. That's what fractals are. It's like it's like repeating patterns. The mango sponge thing. The mango sponge. Example of fractal structure: taking a cube and oh yeah, yes, yes. Okay, I know what this is now. Take a cube and do the following: one for each side of the cube, cut a square hole in the center with a one nine. With a one ninth the area of the face. The side now has eight squares. Two. For each of these eight squares, cut a new hole with the one ninth area of the square. Repeat an infinite number of times. The result is a sponge like structure. The surface area approaches infinity as its volume approaches zero. I didn't know that was the name for it, but I knew the structure. Yeah, it looks like something drilled holes into the banana and an infinite number of holes in a fractal pattern right down to the nano level. Whoa. What could do something like that? The fractals are those weird Muppets that had a spin-off? No. I don't think so. I have one hypothesis. I need a dramatic pause to build tension. Darrell Gulp's waiting for me to continue. It's a result of the microwave's electromagnetic waves. What does that mean? If my guess is correct, then our phone wave named such as a change has the potential to become a weapon of unprecedented destructive power. One well, that could change the face of war as we know it. <laughs> there you go. Twist my lips into a maniacal grin. Then I whip out my phone and put it, in my, put it to my ear. It's me. Proceeding to stage two of the plan. Soon they will learn that Judgment Day is near. All shall be as Stein's gate wills. Resistance is futile. El Sai Conquer. Quit talking to your imaginary friend. Done with, your wi done with the wiring. I want to explain that he's not imaginary, but revealing the identity of my contact would be a betrayal. The last thing I need is another enemy, especially one whose power and cunning rivals that of the organization. He said the line! He's gonna say the line a lot. The phone way name subject to change is now an indecipherable mess of wires. All we did was hook it up to a computer, yet it turned out it's something Mac MacDiver would put together. MacDiver? Really? You mean Mac... Uh, a parody of MacGyver? A popular TV drama that aired in America from 1985 to 1992. The protagonist, MacDyver, not to be confused with the real one, was famous for overcoming obstacles with tools trash from common household items. Yep, there it is, MacGyver. 
Now we can access the microwave's terminal mode to see exactly what's going on in this computer brain. Alright, we're getting a lot of definitions, so... See, a lot of learning is happening! Using another networked external computer terminal to operate a program that cannot be run otherwise. There you go. Well, what's next? We have bananas. So where I love me, Queen Yan Yan, where you asked me to buy some bananas. With her money. She's too nice for her own good. Or maybe she didn't even consider what would happen. By now you think she know that if I buy bananas, I'm going to experiment on them. Poor Mayuri's bananas. Rip rip the rip the fruit snacks that she wanted and now Argo is just you know. And so I put the entire bunch of bananas in a phone way named such as change. You no. Know, Mayushi's gonna cry if you use them all, right? Was it her money? She donated that money to our research efforts. You don't have to use the whole thing. One is enough. One. Dar retrieves the bananas, peels one from the bunch, sticks it back inside the phone wave, names such a change. We'll never reshape the fabric of society as long as money dictates the limits of our science. You're the only one who wants to reshape society, oh green. Ferris. Oh, there's an attachment too. He holds all original sin, also known as Prophets, Nya. Among them is a girl known as the Fallen Angel who accepted chaos, Nya. Attach a picture of her face, so remember it well, Nya. Oh, and, oh, and before I forget, forget, uh, looking at the picture without protection will cause divine eye to activate original sin. Ex uh, excitation, mode 66, compulsory receptor, receptor release, which will annihilate you at the subatomic level, so be careful, Nya. Okay. I'm gonna see the picture. Attachments. Ah, we dead. Anyway. <laughs> Guys, if you didn't look at that with protection, you're now dead. I'm sorry. That's that's literally what science. That's literally what science gate told me. This is what I said. We lost all enthusiasm the second we got back to the lab. What a fickle man. Come on, start the timer already. Right, now where do I put my phone? Phone, phone. Oh, well, you know. Right here. Call complete. It's the access. Hello, this is a phone ring name subject to change. Maybe she guidance system. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the... Number button, please enter the heating time in seconds. In hindsight, we shouldn't have made the Mayushi Guidance sk skippable. Having to wait each time is... We should have made the Mayushi Guidance skippable. Having to wait each time is quite annoying. For example, press... Press hashtag 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press hashtag 120. Finally over. Okay, entering 1, 2... Boom. Complete. Turntable inside the phone way name search and change begins to spin backwards. Two minutes sure is long. Doesn't actually have to be two minutes. Maria has the timer set to two minutes when she first discovered her freezing function. Or whatever it was, so we're just re reproducing that. Naturally, we've experimented with 60 seconds, 180 seconds too. We set it shorter, the freezing only goes halfway, if at all. Conversely, setting it longer increases the effect. You know, if the microwave's emissions are doing it, then should our souls be getting jellified too? I'm still looking bored. Dara finally gets into the discussion at hand. Well, have you ever heard ever? Well, have you ever nuked yourself inside the phone way? Name such as change. I can't even fit in there. Anyway, what's your source on the electromagnetic waves? You must know. It's my mad scientist intuition. Oh, so no facts. As the one said. That 1% inspiration, 99% of perspiration is wasted. So inventors of the world, be inspired! End quote. Wasn't it genius's 1% inspiration? 99% perspiration? Sorry to disappoint, but in recent years it's become common knowledge that this is a misquote. Wahaha! <laughs> Edison said that? Be inspired? Yes, be inspired, he said. I don't know if that was exactly what he said, but I'm sure it was something along those lines. At least that's what the wiki said. 
Therefore, as a genius mad scientist, I am always inspired. Phone boy name such as change rings. It's just going to jellify the banana like usual, isn't it? We need a new experiment. Feels like I wasted 120 seconds on nothing. Jar opens the phone wave name such as the chain store and peeks inside. What? What? Rubs his eyes, blinks several times, and resumes staring into the microwave. What are you doing? Well, uh, it's... Gone. Gone? What's gone? The banana. What is he talking about? Push Jaro aside and look at the phone, na phone wave name so to change. It's gone. There's nothing inside. The banana has vanished. The banana has vanished without a trace. Hmm. After a short pause, to collect myself. I whip out my phone and speak into the silence. It's me. Slight problem. We may have awakened something terrible. What do you mean, something terrible? I ignore Jaro's panicked cry. Surprised too, my heart's pounding, but I try to appear her calm. Invoking emergency order 666. Activate the cold heart prayer call. What? What do you mean we need congressional approval? There's no time you fool! Tokyo will be blasted to atoms! Put my phone away after yelling. You, you should be an actor. <laughs> Sh shut up, ferret stalker. Where'd you hide the banana? Who's the stalker? The banana, where is it? Are you plan planning on becoming a street magician or something? You're the one who hit it, aren't you? Uncomfortable silence. Realize my throat is dry. Where the hell did it go? How should I know? Where did you go, banana? Banana! Banana! Oh, we lost him. Lost the banana, guys. Take the turntable out of the microwave, scour every nook and cranny, and find neither peel nor stem of the banana. Wait. I think I get it now. It's not an electromagnetic weapon. It's a teleportation device. What? Wait, that's absurd. How else could it have vanished? The microwave was closed. Oh, well, maybe we should just calm down. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. We each take a deep breath. <sighs> oh, I know. I eat one of the remaining bananas. That will calm me down. I reach for the bunch of bananas. What the? Impossible. Impossible! Not three minutes ago, Dara plucked a banana from the bunch and put it inside the phone wave named subject to change. Now there's no sign that a banana was ever plucked. Said a single jellified banana has peered among the regular bananas. Oh shit! What the hell's going on? Tara notices too. He reaches out to touch it, but I quickly stop him. Wait! How many bananas are in the lab right now? Just these, I think. Is, it just, is this gel banana attached to the same stem as the banana you just picked? I don't know, man. I wasn't paying attention. It doesn't look like it was ever plucked. No cuts or anything. Aside from the jellification, it looks completely normal. Hey, Daru, could this possibly be? Word I spoke impulsively a few seconds ago. I hesitate to speak it again, but I must. Because no matter how unbelievable it may be, we saw it with our own eyes. My head's full of question marks. I don't know how this happened, but I've to explain it as I saw it. Banana was inside the phone wave, named such as change, turned instantly to its bunch, in other words. A teleporter. You invented a teleporter! Oh. I hear a girl's voice coming from the lounge. That looks like, that looks like an interesting experiment. Who's there? You wouldn't buy... You wanna buy that banana in my you wanna put that banana in your picnic basket? That's fair. Hard just skipped a beat. Turn toward the voice in surprise. And get pierced by a sharp stare. Impossible! What are you doing here? The 18-year-old genius girl! A sadist who humiliates men in public, also known as the zombie! Makise. Kurisu! Nice exposition, bro. <laughs> 
Who are you calling a zombie? What, what is the meaning of this? What is your purpose here? I'm here to see you, Okabe Rintaro-san. Or is it Hoen Kyoma-san? Wait, how the hell does she know my real name? Never spoken in front of her. I was right! You're one of the organization's top agents. An expert with superhuman powers. No wonder you rose from the dead. I'm not dead, alright? Please stop killing me off. Hashida-san, can you do something about this guy? You came at a bad time, Makisishi. Valkyrie and freaking out like this. Daru doesn't seem phased by this girl's entrance. Why? Have you betrayed me, Daru? Calm down, man. Are you being blackmailed? Or did she seduce you? <clears throat> Glare, Karisu. My right-hand man. How dare you? You crossed the line, bitch! Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> <coughs> Chris's eyes flash dangerously, I think. Such intensity from an 18 year old. Maybe she didn't resurrect after, all, after her first death. Maybe she's a robotic killing machine constructed to replace the dead Kurisu. Is that it? Oh, you're talking about, um,. It was all like, uh, Kurusu. Not Kurisu, but Kurusu, I believe it was. But now I'll do as I'm told. Hashida-san gave me the address after yesterday's lecture. He also told me your name. That's all? Truth is, kind of let down. <laughs> so you're here to see me, is that it? Yes. You claim to have seen me die. I can see if that was the truth. Or just a pathetic excuse to grope me. Came for the answer. Now that she mentions it, she did treat me like I was a perv yesterday. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that she didn't call the cops on me after what I did. What choice did I have? Anybody would react the same way if a dead person reappeared before them, right? 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 Anyone? No? Just me? Okay. But your current behavior is all the answer I need. It was all an act to grope me. My initial hypothesis was, was correct. Not so fast! There's more to this than you know. Let's clear my name or I'll be labeled as a perv forever! Anyway, let's put that aside for now. R really? That's a relief. I was sure she was going to call the police. That for now part bothers me. Carissa enters the development room with a quick confident stride. Even though she's only 18, she's got a decent figure and good posture. Not much in the chest, though. Really? Really, Okabe? You don't want to be considered a perv and that's the first thing you're going to comment on? Guilty! Her presence seems to fill the cramped room, driving me and Daru to the corners. Can she tell this area is off limits? I haven't properly introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Makisu Kurisu. Pleased to meet you. She holds out her hand. What's she trying to do? Shoot lightning from her fingertips? <coughs> Was she palpating? Can't even shake hands? Are all Japanese men this difficult? Shake hands. This girl genius is asking for a handshake? Only met yesterday, and just moments ago she was on the verge of calling the cops. You're not Japanese? I've lived in America for seven years. What about it? America. Look down at her slender fingers. Glossy, healthy fingernails. No unnecessary nail polish. Stare fixated. Slowly extend my hand, making sure to keep enough weight on my heels so you flee at a moment's notice. Lightly grab the tip of Carissa's index finger between my thumb and index finger that instantly let go. What's your problem? I can feel your aura of malice. You must be a powerful kung fu master. Don't be ridiculous. Then you're a ninja! Give it a rest. Damn, she's completely cold. <laughs> Tone gets scary sometimes too. <laughs> if you grew up in America, shouldn't you say, Ha ha ha! Nice to meet you! With a smile across your old face when asked for a handshake. No, wait. She'd be asking for a hug, right? Perhaps that's too much to expect from a killing machine. What kind of stereotype is that? Cruise the size. She's not even looking at me. So she's staring at the bananas next to the phone where your name such to change. The bananas which have just exhibited a most unusual phenomenon. With a bunch, one has been completely jellified. Fascinating. 
Krista brings her face closer to it to get a good look. Have any forceps? No! Oh. Then Krista stabs at Jolanda's banana with her index finger. She burns her beautiful fingers and knuckle deep into the slimy banana. What are you doing? That's precious data! It's squishy. Krista extracts her finger, a piece of, piece of jello clinging to her fingertip. She puts that fingertip into her mouth without any hesitation. No taste. Gross. Set them with a straight face. You have quite the appetite, I see. Side effect of the resurrection, perhaps. If you're that hungry, I guess I can give you a banana or two. No, thanks. Either way, those bananas are my Yushis. Come on, don't be shy. This is an offering, take it. As if. Who would eat some Purves banana? A Purves banana? <laughs> Dara starts shaking as if he's been electrocuted. Uh-oh. Dara's going perv mode now, guys. What? What's wrong? Eat a perv's banana. Squishy. Finger in mouth. Gross. With a sour expression. Looks like his cranial pervert processor is overclocking. Um. Can you say that one more time? With a little more humiliated expression, if you please? Huh? Come on, say. We would eat some perv's banana. But if you could add an ah, but it's so after that, it would be extra delicious. Huh? Huh? Ah! Suddenly, Chris's face turns bright red. Mwahaha! Oh, Daru! You may be a worthless, disgusting perv, but let me say, well done, sir! Wait, what? <laughs> Payback is sweet. Now to follow up for maximum combo. Let's show this conceited little girl how true adults fight. So, Maki Sakurisu, you just imagined something, didn't you? By all means, tell us what. Don't be shy. Mwahaha! Why you? Come on, say it, genius girl. What's the imagination of a genius like? I'd love to hear from you. You ass. Grisa turns it back to us with, a, with perked shoulders. Looks like she's capable of expressing human emotion after all. That rules out robotic killing machine. Ah, uh, feel refreshed. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, what? I haven't felt this good in years. What? Way to go, Daru. That's my right-hand man. Always gets the job done. Always puts people in weird situations, I guess? I don't know. I get it. You're both perfs. Well, you could say that. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it, Daru! Uh, don't admit it, you idiot! I don't want to hear that from you. Okay. I came off as a little rude. I apologize. Chris sighs deeply and turns back to us. Composure has already returned. I was only acting that way because you molested me. I'll ignore that for now. I wish she would stop saying for now. So she's going to call the cops on me later. Please tell me what happened to this banana. I would like to hear about that. Chris glanced at the phone wave name such to change. That microwave thing. That's top secret. The one thing I'm clear to share with unauthorized, with unauthorized individuals is that its name is the phone wave name subject to change. Name subject to change? What's that about? Phone wave is weak. Needs a better name. I couldn't care less about its name. I'm afraid that's the only information you're clear for. Hold on, Okarine. Amaki says she might be able to explain what's going on. Hmm. Well, she is a genius. She would have to be. She would have to be to defeat my sharp wit. You can trust her intellect at least. It's hard to stomach her attitude. Ugh. And then I got more emails. All right. Let's see. It's me. Dark was talking. Uh, Taking a nap earlier, and I think he had sleep apnea. It really surprised me when he stopped breathing. He told me he should lose weight. If we won't listen to Okarine, you should talk to him too. You're right! Alright, and more pressing matters. Daru, you're starting to lose weight now. Work that body. Do it. Lose weight. Anyway. Plus, she has danger written on her face. Not to mention, she's a little scary too. Then, I get a great idea. That creepy grin. Are you thinking perverted thoughts again? You said your name's Christina, right? 
Who the hell is Christina? I never said that. Christina sounded like the name of a Hollywood film star. That play has more flavor than her real name. If you wish to learn the secrets of this microwave, then you must meet my conditions. Which are? Condition 1! You must become a lab mem! Ramen? No, lab mem, stupid! Show for laboratory member! You mean you want me to join your research team? So as to return to America in August. I'll have you sign a non-disclosure agreement so you won't betray our secrets. Break the agreement and I'll report your steamy preferred acts to Science Magazine. Good. You're a monster, Ocarine. I'll take five copies. From the moment you became become a lab mem to the moment of your departure, brain shall be used for the benefit of our lab. You're so full of it. Let's see the contract then. What contract? This is a lab, not a corporation. I don't mind lending you my knowledge, but if there is but if there is more pervy nonsense evolved, the answer is no. Don't worry, we don't bite. No more molestation? No, alright! You said that was condition one, so there's gotta be a second one, right? Better not be. Second condition is that you'll overlook all past acts of molestation I may or may not have committed. Oh green so petty. You're the pettiest person I've ever met. That's why I love you. That's why I admire you. <laughs> uh, otaku. Soko ni shimeru akogaruru. Full quote. That's why we love you. That's why we admire you. Quotation from the popular manga. Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. He used to express all someone's capabilities. Often used sarcastically in reference to negative character traits. Such as pettiness. Yay. It's a Jojo reference, guys. Shut up, Daru. You have no right to talk. By the way, Daru's perverted acts aren't included. You two can work it out yourselves. What the hell, man? The hell? <laughs> Those are the conditions. If you can't accept them, then you must leave at once. <laughs> so what will it be? I don't think it's a bad deal at all. You mean for you. Greasy puts her fingers through her brow and shakes her head in an exaggerated gesture. Jeez. I feel like I'm hyper... Hyper secreting uh, noradrenaline. Let me pick my jaw up off the floor. Noradrenaline. Norepinephrine. Okay. A neurotransmitter secreted in the brain, proper name norepinephrine, secreted one in an excited emotional state. Anyway. I don't care about your dislocated jaw. Do you accept the condition or not? Answer me, Christina! Stop adding Tina. My name is Kurisu. Kurisu looks up at the ceiling to calm herself down. Does everyone in America make such exaggerated gestures? Sooner or later she'll say, Damn! Or, Oh my God! Or, Motherfucker! <laughs> okay, I accept. <laughs> Good answer. From that moment forth, you are Lime Man number 004. Welcome, Christina. Codename, The Zombie. I won't answer to either. He's my real name, Hoeing. They spend a minute staring each other down. Chris is the first to look away. Does so in a way that says good grief. Such a child. You say something, genius perv girl? Come on, no more saying perv. I won't treat you like a perv either, so let's drop it already. As long as you understand. Now for the issue at hand, Daru. Give Christina. No Tina either. Give Kurisu Kun an explanation of our experiment so far. Kotoaru! But I refuse. What do I refuse? Oh. Daga Kotoaru! Quotation from the popular manga Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. On the internet, it's used frequently as a cool way to turn someone down. I knew the line right away when they said it, too, so. What does that say about me? I don't know. Anyway. In the end, I'm the one who has to explain. Along the way, I also relate the tale of my heroic deeds, which enrages Kurisu, of course. I finally tell her everything about the bananas and the phone wave names that should change. Kurisu doesn't ask any questions. She's quick to understand, it, as expected of a genius. Hell yeah. She's really smart, guys. Fascinating. Let's hear your opinion. I think we can at least throw out completely worthless theories like electromagnetic weaponry and teleportation. 
The lady doth protest too much. Can we run the experiment one more time? I want to see it for myself. Without waiting for our approval, Karisu plucks an untouched banana and sticks it in the microwave and starts entering the commands on her phone. It's strange. She's still wearing her usual frown, but I can't shake the feeling that she's really enjoying herself. Can't put my finger on why. Call it a hunch. But I mean, she is a scientist. Why shouldn't she enjoy experimenting? Yeah, that's what it is. That's a curse. The curse being mad science. Scientist. Okabasan, Hashida-san, please watch the bananas. Who are you to give me orders? I'm the mad scientist! Oh! Whatever, just keep your eye on the bananas. Okay, so she's a little snippy. Don't worry, do as we're told. Stare at the bananas. Truth be told, we were planning to watch bananas anyway. After missing it the first time, we determined to witness what transpired with our own eyes. 60 seconds have passed. Any change? Nope. Any second now, the gel fly banana should reappear on the stem. If it only happens once, we can just call it an accident and be done with it. If it happens twice, then that's proof that something's actually going on. And then Carissa will have to admit that I, the great Hoin Kyoma, invested, invented humanity's first teleporter. Do you stare at the bananas in anticipation? 100 seconds. A few moments after Carissa's report. Ah! Oh! Gel banana suddenly appears without a sound. Now there are two of them on the bunch. Happened faster than a blink of an eye. It appeared. Man, I lost for words. It's witness the unthinkable. This phenomenon is clearly teleportation. The microwave timer chimes. Greasy peeks into the microwave stumped. How does it look? Huh? Uh, oh, uh. At 104 seconds, it d d disappeared abruptly. Yeah. It's quite flustered. I don't think many people could remain calm after witnessing such a phenomenon. So it is a teleporter, the first in human history. Chris is like, nope. Chris quickly calms down. She furrows her brow and crosses her arms, tapping her right foot as she mutters to herself. Teleportation. Is that even possible? So they're making all these JoJo references. Is it possible that it was just Dio using the Waldo? Well, no, because... You're gonna find out what this is, maybe tonight. Hopefully, we'll see. It did move, no matter. How, it did move, no matter how unbelievable that may be. Could it be quantum teleportation? No, it only occurs on the quantum level. Science, quantum teleportation, does not refer to actual teleportation. In 2004, Japanese researchers performed the first successful complete quantum leap experiment. Suppose we have twin particles, photons, in the case A and B. Because they are twins, they have the property of symmetry. One exhibits upspin, the other will exhibit downspin. This means that observing either particle allows one to know the state of the other. It's called entanglement. State of an elementary particle, photon, cannot be confirmed until observed. For the experiment, we attach data C, the information we want to teleport, to photon A. We're now observing photon AC. Based on that property of symmetry, we know that no matter how far away it may be, photon B will change to match, effectively becoming BC. But that B has not yet been observed. After we send photon AC's information from A's observation equipment to B's observation equipment through standard transmission, now observing photon B will change it to photon BC. The process is called quantum teleportation because data C changes position inst instantly. However, since one step requires using standard data transmission, it is impossible for the information to exceed the speed of light. Finally, photon BC's teleported data C is actually a copy of photon's AC data C. The whereabouts of the original photon C become unknown. This point differentiates quantum teleportation from actual teleportation. Basically, long story short, she's talking about um, something that could only happen on a very, 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 very small scale. And it's not real teleportation because the thing does travel and can be observed traveling from one photon to the next. Uh, it's just we can't do it well. Anyway, don't avert your eyes from the truth. What you've seen with your own eyes is everything. She gives me a sharp look. Her eyes are like a sniper's, hard and keen. Did it really teleport? It's dangerous to reason from the conclusion. Well then, genius girl, what do you call this phenomenon? Let's sort this out. Neither the banana bunch nor the frozen chicken teleported, correct? So maybe there's a size limit for objects that can teleport. But aren't those chicken pieces smaller than the bananas? 
We use the same chicken for each experiment. Come in 12 packs. Marie only buys her favorite, juicy chicken number one. That's quite a lot then. What about salt? You experiment with salt too, right? We use a handful of table salt on the plate for one experiment. Nothing happened. Maybe the plate was in the way. Of course we tried it without the plate, but that didn't change anything. And maybe each individual grain of salt was too small or something. <clears> hmm. <throat> I need a clue. Looks like a genius girl's fighting a hard battle. Starts pacing the room looking a little annoyed. Anything else? Have you noticed anything else about the phone wave? Not phone wave. Phone wave name subject to change. Forget about that. So have you noticed anything or not? Chris is looking at Daro. Looks like she's asking him, not me. True, he should know more about the phone wave name subject to change than I do. So all the maintenance on it after all. Oh, right. One time it shot off a huge electrical discharge. What? I didn't know about I, I didn't know anything about that. That's because you weren't around when it happened. Discharge? How much? It was like a fluorescent light up, lit up fl fluorescent light lit up the development room. Lasts about two seconds, I guess. What were the circumstances? Well, I was adjusting the cell phone attached to it. I hooked it and put it my own in. A little bit later, Sparky Sparky. When was that? Around noon yesterday when we went to see Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. Dr. Nakabachi. That's right. I went to see Dr. Nakabachi's conference yesterday. Come to think of it, he stole his time travel theory from John Titor. Maybe the current John Titor is actually Nakabachi. But wait, Daru. Didn't you say that Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was canceled? Yeah, but you went with Mayushi anyway, remember? No, I don't remember that. After all, Nakabachi's presentation wasn't canceled the way I remember it. I still don't understand why my memories seem to disagree with everyone else's. That reminds me, I sent you an email back then. Did you get it? An email? That email you showed me at ATF yesterday. Wait, not Carissa comes closer. It said someone stabbed me at the presentation, didn't it? Yeah, but for some reason, Daro's phone received it a week ago. Huh? Wasn't that one of your stories? If it wasn't. And that would make the timestamp weird. I always speak the truth. If you don't trust me, I'll show you my send history. I whip my, my phone and call up the history. But... It's gone. Not a trace of that mail remains. According to my memory, I think it was about 30 minutes after Do Dr. Nakabachi's conference. About 10 people, including me, saw Kurisu's body, panicked, and fled the Radicon. That's when I sent that email. No matter how many times I check, there's no record of it. Should be there, but it isn't. Just like the banana inside the phone wave named such to change. Where did it go? I could have sworn I sent it just before 1 p.m. Oh, oh yeah. That's when the discharge phenomenon happened. Show I was watching was about to end. It's only a flash of inspiration strikes. Inspiration. Edison would be proud. This isn't something you can accomplish with effort. Basically, I'm a genius. Turn to Dara and Carissa with a huge grin on my face. I get it. So that's what happened. Uh, what? Oh, this is one of Ogreen's usual habits. So don't mind it. Seriously. Silence! I reached the answer. Now the world will tremble. I slapped the top of the phone wave, named subject to change. The disappearance of my mail. The strange timestamp. Sunny electrical discharge must be related somehow. I understand that they're related somehow, but how? It's your job to figure that out, Christina. How should that sound? Talk to this guy. Talking to this guy is so tiring. Everyone's like that at first. Trick is to not take him seriously. You call yourself my right hand man? Whatever, I'll prove that I'm right. We can reproduce the electrical discharge phenomenon to bring us closer to understanding the time stamp mystery. Daru, describe the phone wave name subject change status when the discharge phenomenon occurred. It was kind of a mess. I connected my phone to the phone wave. I was testing to see if I could control it with the X68000. 
Just connect the phone plugged into the phone with a name such as change replaced with mine. Then I hear the door open in the lounge. I am home. So hungry. Maria comes in carrying a convenience store bag. Looks like she's done, uh, done with work. Time to eat some chicken. Juicy chicken number one. Oh, Kareen, did you buy the bananas? Oh, Kareen? She enters the development room, her eyes go wide. Huh? We have a guest. When she notices Carissa, Maria bows her head with her usual smile. I'm Mayushi. Nice to meet you. I'm Makisu. Apparently, I'm a lab mem now. Really? That's great. Another girl lab mem. Daru, what were you doing with the X X68000? Like I said, I was adjusting the incoming mail settings. I was monitoring the moment to receive mail for remote control. That's why I put it on freezing mode for 120 seconds too. Maybe so that you could start freezing mode by computer. Tested it out yesterday too. Marie, insert the juicy chicken number one into the phone wave. Name such exchange. Yo, want some? I can give you one each. The usual ditziness, Mayuri puts the chicken inside the microwave. Dara explains what everything on the computer monitor means. Doesn't look that different from using DOS. Hey, you guys know DOS? I know DOS. I used to write stuff in DOS. It was fun. Short for a disk operating system, an early 60 bit operating system. Woo! Enter 120 hashtag on the keyboard and strike the entry key. The following name search chain starts up. Juicy Chicken number one starts spinning backwards on the turntable. Chris stares hard at the phone when he names how to change, as if to not let any anom anomaly, no matter how slight, escape her notice. So we reproduce the conditions that existed when the discharge phenomenon occurred, right? Oh, uh, how was it again? You there, assistant! Huh? Me? Who else? When did I become your assistant? To send something to my phone. We reproduce the conditions correctly. We send something to my phone while it's connected to the phone wave named such a change. It should arrive with the time set from the past, not the present. My assistant's Carissa just scowls. I don't even know your email address. What a useless assistant. Don't call me your assistant. Daro, send an email from your phone. Uh, sure, but what? Anything. Uh, um... Send Christina's a perv. I thought we agreed to stop saying that. Well, let's compromise and go with Ocarina's a perv. You traitor! <laughs> Good job, Hashita-san. <laughs> Chris grins and gives Daru a thumbs up. I really don't like this. Oh no! Maishi's bananas! Sounds like Mayuri has found the result of our latest experiment. They became gel banana- gel banana- Gel banners. Man, that's hard to say. We experiment on them. But they were my Yushis. Want me to send the mail now? You'll be, you'll be reimbursed later. By Hoin san, that is. Why me? Jeez. Why do you always have to experiment on my Yushis food? Ah, don't tell me you're experimenting on the chicken, too. We are. <laughs> okay, sending it now. Sending, sending, click. Maria slips past me and steps on to the active phone when he names such a change. For anyone who actually grabs the handle. Wait, don't open that! Huh? But it's too late. Wah, wah! Blue white light fills the room, crackling angrily like the heart of a storm. An electric discharge. Violent sparkling, uh, sparking sound. Grab Yuri and pull her away from the phone when name such a change. Are we gonna die? Oh no, what's happening? Well. The a thick cloud of smoke fills the room. Okay, we're gay. It's like something's burning. My eyes are numb from all the flashing light. 
Try blinking several times to regain my sight. You hear Kurisa and Daru coughing. Everyone, okay? So, so mo. That was definitely more than two seconds. Marie squeezes my upper arm with her slender fingers. Uh, okay, um, what just happened? The vision gradually returns. Mary looks perplexed. Are you okay? No burns or anything. Hmm, it doesn't hurt anywhere, so I think I'm okay. Say so covering Mary was the right choice. Maybe an insane mad scientist, but I still risk life and limb for the safety of my comrades. Gently let Maria out of my embrace. Whew, well that was something. Wipe the sweat off my brow. Hey, look at this. Chris's voice is strained. My vision finally restored, I take another look around the room. What I see strikes me speechless. The large table in the center of the room is made of thick solid wood. Hold about five or six people without breaking. So you place the phone wave name subject to change and the X68000 on it. The table has been split in two as if by a woodcutter's axe. Computer and other parts connected to the microwave are scattered across the floor. The microwave itself has broken through the table. It's literally stuck in the floor. What the hell? I'll do that. Yeah, it's a microwave, but it's not heavy enough to make a hole in the floor. This can't be caused by electrical discharge. Some other phenomenon? Shake off my surprise. There's no time to be standing with jaw gape holding Kuma. Seize the moment! <laughs> Just as my calculations predicted! First, some maniacal laughter. Next, I try to take out my phone and do the usual, but unfortunately, it's still plugged into phone wave noobs, which should change. El Sai Kangaroo. Whisper the words. Words that have no meaning. Words I use simply because they sound cool. These words have meaning because they have no meaning. For years of repeated use, just speaking them is enough to calm my heart. So what about my use chicken? Eh. My Yuri stands up and looks inside the phone when he names such a change. It's embedded in the floor, but she somehow manages to pry the door open. Uh, my Yuri's chicken is all burnt black. Pat my Yuri's shoulders to cheer her up. Juicy Chicken Number One made a noble sacrifice for the progress of science. Let us pray for his happiness in the next life. The chicken doesn't matter right now. We need to determine what happened with the phone wait. It doesn't matter. That's so mean, uh, Christina Chan. Hey, Owen Kyoma, do something about this. My Ishi sons learned my name wrong. More importantly, we need ventilation. Cough, cough. Silence, all of you. Fix everything with an overpowering stare. It shall be remembered as the moment that the greatest experiment of the century succeeded and brought humanity a step closer, step forward in a new direction. You guys have no right to ruin that with their foolish talk. My heart's pounding. I detach my phone away from the phone. My phone from the phone wave name such to change. Luckily, it's completely unharmed. Good. Open it. It still works. Bring up the list of received emails. The emails should come at the top. However, my heart beats even faster. The almost email isn't the one Daru sent before the discharge occurred. This impossible phenomenon is exactly what I was hoping for. Look back through my email history. And there, I find it. <laughs> Success! I don't know why, but it was a success. Timestamp proves it. Received this email on July 24th, five days ago. This is the same exact thing that happened to my someone Sam Carissa email. Mail sent on the 29th arrives on the 24th. Just now, the truth was revealed to me in a flash of inspiration. It all connects. There's a meaning behind this series of events, and only one true answer. I've discovered the phone wave named subject to change true hidden function. This is an intuition, that's right, this is conviction. Just spit it out. What do you think it is? Feel my lips twist into a grin. I meet Carissa's glare head on. 
First, let me say one thing. The greatest inventions are created by accident. This we call serendipity. Get on with it. How dare she ruin my speech. Oh well, let's get to the point. Mail was sent to the past. The chicken returned to its frozen state. The plucked banana returned to the bunch. No, no way. Chrissy seems to get it now. As expected of my genius assistant. Yes way! This is the choice of Steins Gate. The phone wave name subject to change. Is a time machine! Hell yeah. There you go, guys. We have finally. Oh, we got mail. Oh, well, let's check mail. Uh oh. Shining Finger is really annoying. <laughs> Milky, are you, are you, are you a student of Comic Con? Are you on some rank? Mwaka. Uh. Are you a day person or a night person? You're rather than milling around a certain time. Oh, okay. Uh, by the way, I don't like talking on the phones. So please don't call me. Bye. Yeah, hashtag relatable. Just remember I didn't tell you my phone number. That's okay. I'm a lot more comfortable communicating my email anyway. What about you, Mokol Uh Are you still asleep? Rise and shine. Have you talked to a super hacker yet? Oh, let's hear more about the John. What's his face? I'm super curious. I'm nocturnal, so I usually don't go to bed until the sun comes up. It's not so bad once you get used to it. Mail, okay. okay. All right, that's a lot. A lot. A lot of emails we have to read through. But for now... We're going to leave you with this nice start of chapter 2 cliffhanger. Now, shit has gone down. And uh, we're going to see what this quote-unquote time machine really is, maybe. So for now, this is Anime Fan RK 2K. Thank you very much for joining me for tonight's Visual Thursdays. Where I get to laugh like a maniac. And I'll probably continue to do so as time passes. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. See you all. Peace. Bye.